Hi guys, welcome back to the Art of Server. In the previous video, I showed you guys the hardware that was sent to me by Broadcom, which consisted of a Mega Raid 956016i in a Supermicro server with an AMD Epic processor. If you haven't seen that video and you want to get familiar with the hardware that will be in today's demonstration, I'll link that video in the corner so you can go check that out first and then come back. Now, you guys know that my interests are primarily with HBA SAS controllers and not really Mega Raid hardware RAID controllers. However, these Mega Raid controllers can be used with ZFS by using single drive RAID 0 setups, as I've demonstrated in the past in my Forbidden Arts of ZFS series. Additionally, Mega Raid controllers also have a JBOD mode or HBA mode that simulates the behavior of an HBA controller. Now, if you recall, the 9560 controller is a tri-mode controller that can work with SAS, SATA, as well as NVMe drives. And in this case, it is connected to a set of four Intel P4610 NVMe drives. These drives are essentially PCIe storage devices that normally would be directly connected to the PCIe bus. So what I thought would be interesting to investigate is a comparison between directly connected NVMe drives versus connecting through this tri-mode Mega Raid controller. Additionally, I want to see if there are any differences in performance characteristics between the single drive RAID 0 setup versus a JBOD mode setup. So in today's video, I'm going to be investigating these differences by running some benchmarks of these various scenarios. Now, before I started investigating these comparisons, the hypothesis in my mind was that NVMe drives would perform best being directly connected to the PCI bus. This just seemed to make more sense to me because a direct PCI connection removes any potential limitations that might be introduced by sticking controller between the NVMe drive and the system. So my initial ex expectation was to learn how much the Mega Ray controller would hinder the NVMe drives. But some of the results I got were not exactly what I expected. So if you want to find out what some of those surprising results are, be sure to stay until the end. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, the hardware that will be used in today's demonstration was sent to me by Broadcom, and this consists of the Mega Raid 956060i controller, the Intel P4610 NVMe drives, and the Supermicro server that we'll be using today. I don't get to keep any of this hardware, and they will be sent back to Broadcom once I'm done. No money has exchanged hands, and if I happen to express any opinions about any of the hardware in this video, they are purely my own. And Broadcom has not stipulated what I can or cannot say about any of their products. Also, Broadcom will not get to review this video before its release. So with that out of the way, let me also mention that I will leave timestamps down in the video description for those of you who want to skip to the various benchmark results, you can go ahead and do that. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you is the hardware in the system. So let's go ahead and look for an LSI controller. So you can see that we have the Mega Raid 956060i controller at this PCIe address right here. And one of the things that I want to show you is the PCIe link speed because this is the first generation of Broadcom controllers to support PCIe 4.0. And so let me scroll back up here. So you can see that this is the Mega Raid 956016i controller. And down here at the link capability line, you can see that the speed, the supported speed is 16 gigatransfers per second. So that is PCIe 4.0 with width by eight, so there's eight PCI lanes. And then in fact, if you look down at the link status, and this is an AMD Epic that supports PCI 4.0, so you'll notice that we uh, are indeed connecting at 16 gigatransfers per second, so that's PCI 4.0 at by eight PCI lanes. All right, guys, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the testing methodology. So basically we're gonna be using the FIO benchmarking tool but Broadcom has provided some scripts to kind of uh, provide some automation around that. So I want to kind of uh, show you guys that and show you kind of what that actually does. The script is this one, uh, the 30 underscore run benchmark. And let me go to the top here. So at the top here, we're going to designate what drive we're actually going to test. And you'll see that I have a couple different scenarios set up here. And, and that's because we're going to be testing um, nine different uh, test cases and I'll, I'll get into those details in a little bit after I describe how we're going to test each one of those Okay, so uh, but, but basically you designate which drive you're going to test and 
here we have preconditioning turned on. So this is actually something that I, I wasn't very familiar with in the past and I had to learn a little bit more about it here. But when you're testing uh, benchmarking uh, SSDs, it's important to precondition the drive, which is basically, you know, you're, you're, you're just performing IO on like the entire drive. And the reason for that is that if you don't do that, sometimes it seems like the SSD can have like a boost in performance uh, just out of nowhere. And, and so you don't get like a really realistic reflection of what the drive can sustain over time. And this is actually the second time I'm doing this video because the first time I did this, I turned off preconditioning because it takes a long time because you basically have to do an entire drive right. And so it puts a lot of, it wears a lot of endurance on the drive itself. And also it just takes a long time to do that. And I was trying to save some time running these tests and getting the results. And so I had turned off preconditioning. And when I did that, some of the results were a little odd because there were just kind of these random spikes in performance in the various different test cases and that, you know, just didn't make sense. And then the pattern would kind of go away in, in other cases. And so anyway, so I, I looked it up and I found out that like, yeah, SSDs kind of have this quirkiness that if you don't do the preconditioning, it can kind of throw your results off. And so this uh, is going to turn on that preconditioning for uh, these SSDs. All right, so it's going to take a really, really long time to run these tests. And uh, basically, you know, I'm going to skip that part. I'm not obviously not going to record me running a test for several hours. So I'm going to show you how I set up the drives for the testing. And then I'm going to show you the results I got running the tests. Okay, so anyway, we're going to do some preconditioning because we are we are testing NVMe SSDs. So um, that will get us more realistic and cons consistent results. Okay. These are the different workloads we're going to work on. Okay, for sequential reads and writes, we're going to use a 256K uh, block size, and we're going to do both the reads and writes. Okay, so that's a fairly standard. Now, I know some benchmarks like to use 128K, or personally, I like to use like one megabyte. Um, but either way, this is a fairly large block size, and I think we're going to get, you know, a, a reasonable result out of this. Okay, and... I'm not going to do the 4K sequential reads and writes because that's just not that interesting. Um, you know it's going to be really slow when you are doing really, really small block sizes and you're basically going to be limited by the IOPS. And so instead, we're going to just focus on where it is interesting to look at 4K block sizes, which is the random reads and writes. Okay, so basically we're going to be running these four tests, right? The two random reads and writes at 4K, the two sequential uh for the reads and writes in with 256K blocks. All right, so each test run is gonna basically give us um, those four test results. And this is also going to test at different Q depths. And the default that Broadcom had this gonna has five different Q depths, but again, in the interest of saving some time, uh, I'm just gonna focus kind of on the extreme. So we're gonna do the Q depth of one, which is usually the more challenging scenario. And then uh, I just kind of picked the middle value for 16 and then 256 for the kind of other extreme of, you know, a, a high Q depth. And so, you know, those are the three different kind of Q depth scenarios we're going to look at. All right. So, so we're going to have basically two times two times three, right? So that's 12 different um, situations here. And then we're going to also look at workload. So this is basically the number of parallel processes we're going to run during the benchmark test. And if you just run one process, typically, uh, because these are fairly high performing drives, typically you're just not gonna be able to really saturate the performance uh, of a drive with a single process. And so we're gonna see that I think later on in, in the test results. But I also wanna kind of show you how when once you ramp up the number of processes, you're better able to kind of saturate the performance or basically reach the limits uh, or even push the limits of this hardware setup. So we're going to test at one process, eight process, and 16 processes. Okay. All right. And uh, down here. So uh, I just want to point out a few things. We're going to disable the disk cache. All right. So we're going to take that out of the equation. And then uh, when you set NR requests to uh, a blank here, it's basically going to have the script probe the drives for their maximum Q depths and then set that um, 
value at the you know at the drive level and with a maximum i think of eight thousand or something like that all right so so this the script is going to do a little bit of tuning on the drives of basically disabling the cache and then uh maxim, maximizing the queued up uh, setting all right so that's what this is going to do it's basically going to use these settings generate a whole bunch of file scripts for all the various different scenarios and so that's a total of um so we got the reads and writes of sequential random so that's two times two we got the three q depths for that's 12. um we got the uh, three different uh parallel processes the one eight and 16 and so that's another three uh and then for each result of course we're going to get a iops number and we're going to get a bandwidth number of course now those two numbers are related you take the iops times the block size and you get the bandwidth right so but nonetheless we're going to get two numbers and so that's a total of 72 data points per test case and we have nine different test cases that i will describe shortly here so we're looking at a total of 648 data points that we're going to be collecting and of course i'm not going to discuss all 648 points but i will kind of uh, summarize those in some charts later on when i show you the results all right so anyway that's the testing methodology next let's talk about the different scenarios that i want to test here all right guys so i put together this slide to kind of show you the different uh, the nine different test cases that I want to investigate here. So let me explain this by first uh, talking about what's on the uh, left side over here. All right, so these are different types of drive configurations. So single drive RAID 0 is basically we have the 9560 controller in uh, RAID personality. We're going to use that to set up each of the drives as a single drive RAID 0 volume. Okay, And JBOD is basically we flip the uh, personality of the uh, the controller to JBOD mode, and then we set each of those NVMe drives as a JBOD drive. Okay. Now these two scenarios effectively are functionally basically the same. And so you might think, well, you know, uh, is there any difference? Right. And, and that's actually why I'm doing this because I want to know if there's a difference between single drive rate zero versus setting them up as JBOD drives, you know, uh, they are kind of more or less functionally the same, but is there a performance difference, for example, you know, is the kind of question I want to answer here. And then, of course, uh, both of these scenarios are going through the 9560 controller. And I want to compare that to how the drive performs when it's connected directly to the PCI bus. So that's the third one down here. All right. So I want to look at these three because I want to compare the performance profiles between single drive RAID 0, JBOD mode, and directly connected to the PCI bus for these NVMe drives. Now, of course, uh, as I've mentioned before, my initial hypothesis is that directly connecting the drive to the PCI bus is probably going to be the, the, the get you the best results, but we're going to find out, you know, we're going to see if that hypothesis is true or not. All right. So let's talk about the top here. So the top here, um, these are kind of four or sorry, three different, uh, setups that I want to investigate with these, um, these drive configurations. So one is the, the, the very left one here is basically my, my control or my reference point. I'm going to test one drive, right? Just in, in one of the, in these setups, I'm going to just test one drive and let's see if we get numbers that are representative of what you might expect by looking at the spec sheet of the Intel P4610, right? Let's just see if we get something close or similar to it and see how that how the performance varies amongst you know this stuff but this is more or less just kind of a reference point just to just to see how things work with just one drive okay now the more interesting ones are the the center and, and the right side column here so the center column test is what i call the synchronous performance profile which is where i want to glue those four drives together uh, working together as a single volume all right and so in raid personality right here uh, we're going to take advantage of the RAID capability of the controller and just, you know, use the RAID uh, uh, controller to set up a RAID 0 with all four NVMe drives. And in JBOD mode, of course, we lose the RAID capability of the controller. So instead, we're going to set up the four drives as JBOD drives, but we're going to glue them together into a RAID 0 single volume using software RAID with, you know, Linux um, software RAID. And then uh, we remove the drives over to the uh, drive base that are directly connected to the PCI bus. And then uh, repeat the same thing with four directly connected uh, NVMe drives glued together in RAID 0 with software uh, RAID. Okay, so that's 
the what I call the synchronous performance profile because all drives are working together in a single volume. Now, you might say, well, that adds this layer, whether it's the hardware RAID layer or the software RAID layer, that adds a layer between you know your, your testing software and the hardware, right? And so if there are potentially any inefficiencies introduced by that l- layer being shimmed between your testing you know, file in this case, the testing software and the hardware, then that could affect your results. So let's get rid of that layer. Let's see what happens if we get that, you know, is there a difference between removing that layer versus having the RAID zero layer in between? And so the last, the very, very right column here, which I will call the asynchronous aggregate performance profile, which is basically we're going to test those four drives separately, individually, okay, not together as one volume, but individually, and we're going to aggregate the results and we're going to see, first of all, is there a difference between the RAID zero setup versus just four individual drives being tested individually, right? That's kind of an interesting scenario, right? But the other scenario that I think is going to be interesting to look at by doing this test is that if there is some efficient inefficiencies introduced by the RAID zero layer, whether in hardware or software, uh, when we strip that out, I think this is basically the highest performing you know, may not be the most functional, you know, maybe you don't want the storage split up in four different, you know, places, but at least from a performance standpoint, you're basically getting the raw performance of all four drives. And then we're just going to add those numbers up to get the maximum performance. And so this scenario, I think is the scenario that we want, if we want to push the limits of the controller, right? So that's kind of another uh, angle that I want to investigate with this type of testing is uh, now remember that controller uh, is rated for somewhere around 3 million IOPS. So, you know, can we push uh, that limit or can we get close to that limit or push that limit in this setup, which is, you know, uh, theoretically would be the way to get the highest IOPS, right? Because you're, you're stripping away any kind of raid layer, you know, you are just raw performance of four drives aggregated together. Right. So, uh, so that's another reason to, look at the uh, aggregate performance of four individual drives. Okay. All right. So let's get started. All right, guys. So let me show you how I'm going to set up the single drive um, test case. So the first one is we're going to set each uh, NVMe drive as, so let me show you that. Yeah, we have four NVMe drives. We're going to set them up as single drive RAID zeros and then run the test. So we'll add BD each V uh, R zero. All right. So we're going to do that. Okay. So now if I run show all, um, let's see if scroll up here. All right. So now we have each of these drives as single drive rate zero. And if I run LS SCSI, of course, you're going to see these, uh, four block devices for each of those SSDs. All right. So we're just going to pick one of those and run the test on. So let's see. Um, so yeah, I already have it set up to test volume SDA. And so actually I don't need to write that. So we're just going to go ahead and run this. All right. So the next scenario we're going to test is the JBOD mode. And so, um, let me, first of all, um, delete the drives we just created and all right. So we're currently in raid personality. We're going to switch that to uh, JBOD. All right, so now we got to reboot the machine. So um, let me reboot it and uh, we'll come back when it's booted up. All right, so the machine's booted up and I'm logged back in. Let's uh, check on the uh, controller personality. Personality, I got to spell that right first. All right, so now we are in JBOD mode. All right, so we're going to go ahead and set up the uh, all the drives as... Um, as JBOD. Oops. All right. So now if I run show, you can see the JBOD list shows those four NVMe drives and, uh, under LS SCSI, I should see them. Here we are NVMe, uh, JBOD drives. And, uh, yeah, so now we can just basically rerun the test. And since this is basically still SDA, we're going to just rerun the test as it was. 
All right, so here are the uh, four NVMe drives connected to the uh, Broadcom controller. We're gonna pull these guys out. All right, and we're gonna put them in these four bays because these are the ones that are connected directly to the PCI bus. So let me just put the blanks in here. Okay, and two more. All right, so let's put these in these bays where they will be connected directly to the PCI bus. All right, so oh, that's not in all the way, is it? Okay, so now we're ready. All right, let's go ahead and power this guy on. All right, the server's booted back up and I've already logged into the server here. So if we run LS SCSI now, you'll see that I have the four NVMe drives showing up as dev NVMe 0 and 1 and uh, 1 and 1, 2 and 1, 3 and 1, right? So uh, let's go ahead and uh, now, since the path to the drive has changed, it's no longer SDA or SDB, SDC. Um, let me go ahead and edit the uh, script here. So we're no longer going to be testing SDA, but instead we're going to test NVMe uh, 0N1. All right, so let me go and save that. And uh, we'll go ahead and run this. All right, guys, so here are the results from the benchmark. And I've organized the data into these tables and followed up with some charts and we'll be looking at some of those charts. But before we get into the numbers, I kind of want to talk about the specifications of this particular SSD so that we kind of have some set expectations of uh, what kind of numbers we want to look for. All right, so the SSD is the Intel P4610 and we have the 1.6 uh, terabyte version. And so according to these specifications, we are expecting uh, sequential reads of about 3200 megabytes per second, uh, sequential writes of 3200 megabytes per second, random read 4K uh, random reads at 640,000 IOPS, and 4K random writes at 220,000 IOPS. So those are the specification numbers for that particular SSD. So we're expecting to see numbers that are either close to this or exactly that, right? So we'll see what happens when we look at the data we get here. All right, so for these I split the data between the 4K random I.O. into uh, one sheet and the sequential I.O. into a second sheet. And so let's start by looking at the 4K random read uh, results. And with random reads, I tend to like to look at, or any kind of random I.O. really with small transaction sizes, I tend to want to look at the IOPS number because we're really probably not going to hit the limits of the bandwidth. And so let's go ahead and look at some of the charts here. Here is the single worker 4K random read results. Q depth one you can see is really struggling there and that's kind of expected. Q depth one is the uh, kind of most challenging use cases here. Uh, as we increase the Q depth, you can see the performance uh, dramatically increases. We are hitting above 160,000, I think, uh, IOPS here. And then over here, we are hitting above 250,000. But this is none of this is very close to the 640,000 IOPS that we're expecting from this SSD. So I don't think this workload is enough to stress that particular SSD. One thing that's of note here that's interesting is that you look at the yellow column, which is the NVMe, direct NVMe PCI connection. Uh, that is slightly ahead of the other ones here. And so that sort of more or less supports my original hypothesis that I think we're going to see the best performance with the NVMe drive directly connected to the PCI bus without the controller in between, right? Uh, and so this data so far at least kind of sort of confirms that, although it's not really a significant difference here. I think this is, we're looking at 269, almost 270,000 over about 250,000 right there. Yeah. So I think that's maybe what, like a 5% difference or so. So there is a slight advantage. It's not significant, but at least I think my hypothesis in this case is uh, valid. 
All right, so let's go on and look at the higher uh, end workloads. Here we have eight workers, 4K random reads. Uh, again, Q depth one is struggling. It's hitting somewhere around 100,000 IOPS here. Uh, now it gets more interesting here as we go to Q depth 16 and 256. We are seeing here at Q depth 16, single ri drive RAID zero is hitting over above 600,000 IOPS, 607,000 IOPS, 610,000 IOPS. So now we are getting really close to the specifications, which was rated at 640 IOPS. If we look over here at 256 Q depth, we are now hitting above 640. So we are actually almost close to 660. Yeah, above 660 here and six, yeah, 660. So we are actually hitting above the uh, specification of 640 IOPS. We are now hitting uh, over 650 to 660,000 IOPS. So at eight workers, 256 Q depth, we are now able to basically get the full potential, I think, of that particular SSD with 4K random reads. And if we move up to Q depth or the 16 worker test here, you can see again, Q depth one struggles a little bit, but Q depth 16, we are hitting over 650,000 in all cases, some of them 660,000. And at Q depth 256, we are seeing 661,000, 660,000. So we're consistently near the 660,000, except here with the single drive rate zero, seems to be struggling a little bit in this case here. It is hitting at 578,000 IOPS. Single drive RAID zero seems to show a little bit of weakness here in this particular use case under the uh, heaviest load of 16 workers and QDEP 256. But the rest of the other configurations, the JBOD configuration and the NVMe, the direct NVMe connection are more or less evenly matched to be honest. So. Again, I think we are seeing some advantage of having that SSD directly connected to the PCI bus, but it is not a significant uh, advantage. And in some of these heavier workloads, we're actually seeing them kind of even, evenly matched with the, at least the JBOD one where the single drive rate zero is struggling a little bit. All right, let's go ahead and now look at some of the uh, 4K random writes here. So here's the single process 4K random writes. Again, this is very similar. Q depth one struggling. At Q depth 16, we are hitting above 200,000 IOPS. So here we're getting very close to the specification of 220,000 IOPS was kind of the target, right, for the specifications. But we are seeing that the direct NVMe connection is a little bit better, performing slightly better. So that's 205 versus like 200. You know, so that's what maybe like 5% or something like that. Not, not much significant gain from the direct PCI connection. So that's pretty interesting to me because I really thought that the uh, controller would kind of get in the way a little bit more. So that's actually really good. Really good news that the controller is not really hindering the performance of the SSD much here. So over here at the uh, QDEP 256, we're seeing 207, 204, 207. So this is more or less evenly matched. And I think we're getting very close or if not already at specifications for that particular SSD. Let's go ahead and look at the eight worker load here. Here we are seeing 208, 203, 215. Okay, so here 215 we are seeing, this is probably the closest we've gotten to the 220,000 IOPS rating for this particular SSD. But honestly, if you look at these charts, let's go down to 16 workers here. More or less, all three configurations between the single drive rate zero JBOD versus direct PCIe NVMe connections are more or less evenly matched with maybe the NVMe just having a very, very slight edge above the other ones, but it's really, really not significant at all. It's kind of like maybe one to 5% gain over the other ones. So, you know, really good job for Broadcom's controller, you know, basically not getting in the way of the uh, the performance of this SSD. I mean, they're very, very closely matched. You know, there is, yeah, slightly, you know, you can see that the, the yellow bar is slightly ahead of the other ones, but ever so slightly. I mean, it's really not that significant other than maybe this one is a little bit more significant here, but yeah. All right, so those are the uh, 4K random writes uh, results. Let's go ahead and look at the sequential IO results. All right, guys, so here we are looking at sequential IO results. For sequential IO, 
I tend to like to look at the bandwidth numbers because we're really not going to push the IOPS limits uh, with 256K transaction sizes. And you can see here that most of these uh, IOPS numbers are in the 10, 12,000s. So we're nothing close to the limit of the SSD. So we're going to look at the bandwidth numbers. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the charts for the bandwidth numbers. Okay, so here's the single worker, 256K sequential reads. Now remember the number we're, we're looking for is 3,200 megabytes per second. And this chart here, one thing that I'm noticing here that I didn't expect is that you can see the NVMe, the direct NVMe is struggling a little bit. It is a little bit behind the other ones. And if we just kind of scroll down real quick, yeah, you, we see that pattern all across the board here for the sequential reads. The NVMe is not performing very well directly connected to the PCI bus. I can't explain that. Like, why would that be slower than going through the controller? I mean, does the controller do something to boost the performance of the SSD in this particular use case? I don't know. Remember the um, the target that we're looking for is 3,200 megabytes per second. And already here under the single drive rate zero and JBOD connection at QDEP 16, we are already seeing that goal reached. Basically, we're hitting almost 3,300 megabytes per second. So we're actually... Uh, a little bit above specification here. Uh, the NVMe drive is below, actually. It's uh, under 3,000 here. So that's really interesting. I'm really surprised to see that the NVMe is so significantly below the other ones and not even hitting specifications. So that's really interesting. Let's go down to eight workers here. We're basically seeing the same pattern, more or less. The, NV the direct NVMe connection not even hitting 3,000. So that's, that's kind of interesting. The... JPOD and um, single drive RAID 0 here at QDEP 16 is getting close to 3300, so that's above specification. And if we go down to the 16 worker load, QDEP 1 is hitting 3254, 3292, so yeah, these are above specification. The direct NVMe is under 3000, and that pretty much repeats itself to QDEP 16 and QDEP 256. All right, so let's go ahead and look at sequential writes next. All right, so here are the sequential writes with uh, one worker. I mean, you can see that the NVMe is ever so slightly above the others, but I mean, they're so evenly matched. I mean, it looks very, very evenly matched here, at least under one worker load here. You know, it is ever so slightly faster, but not by much. And we are already hitting uh, almost 2,000, but of course that's not, uh, the specification was 3,200, so uh, under one one worker, it's not enough to push the limits of the SSD. So let's go down to eight workers here. Now this is more interesting. Okay, okay, here, l l check this out. At uh, QDepth 1, eight workers, sequential writes, the QDepth 1 NVMe direct PCI connection is now hitting close to 3,200 um, megabytes per second. So that's actually getting close to specification, whereas the uh, single drive rate zero and JBOD are significantly slower here at 2400-ish. Yeah, so that's kind of surprising. And the single drive rate zero, as the QDEP increases, kind of degrades down to almost 2000, 2000, while the NVMe kind of uh, is able to sustain its performance at QDEP 16, but then degrades down to about 2000, at QDEP 256. So at the higher end workloads, that advantage that the direct PCI connection has somehow diminishes below the JBOD configuration. So that's interesting. I was not expecting, uh, I, was, I was not expecting NVMe to, you know, perform less than the other two. Um, and I certainly didn't think that the JBOD connection would, you know, be, uh, outperforming the other two. All right, so at the highest workloads here at uh, 16 workers, QDEPTH 1, the direct NVMe uh, PCI connection is still showing its advantage, um, basically hitting the specifications of that SSD. And again, we're seeing the same pattern as we did in the previous chart above. Uh, the single drive rate zero and JBOD are not performing as well as that. But as we increase the workload, it seems to even itself out. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah, so so it looks like if you look at these three charts, at the high end workloads, these the QDEP 256 uh, or 16 workers with QDEP 16, the advantage of the direct PCIe NVMe connection diminishes and kind of more or less evenly matches the other ones. 
uh, and the same thing happens at the low end. But in the mid-range here, where we have 16 workers uh, queued up to one or eight workers with queued up to one and queued up 16, uh, we're seeing an advantage for the direct PCI connection. So that's really interesting. I, now, I can't really explain why that's the case, but those are the results. All right, guys, so for the next few test cases, we're going to glue those uh, four drives together in a single volume of RAID 0. So right now I do have the controller set. Oops, I cannot spell personality today. All right, I have it set in RAID mode, and we're going to create a single uh, RAID 0 volume out of those four NVMe drives. So I should be able to show you that we have the four NVMe drives here. All right, so let's go ahead and create the add VD RAID 0 and the drives will be 252 enclosure and uh, 4 comma 6 comma 8 comma 10. So those are the four drives based on the uh, enclosure ID and slot ID. So all right, let's go. So now if I do show all or um, let's just do this instead, C0 D all. Oops. All right, so here we are with the RAID 0 with uh, almost 6 terabytes because those are like 1.6 terabyte drives each. And LS SCSI should show us a single volume as dev SDA. All right, so let's get the uh, benchmark script ready for that. So we're going to go back to dev SDA and uh, go ahead and run this. All right, so I have the uh, server in um, JBOD mode. So let's just confirm that here. Personality. All right, so we have the control in JBOD mode. I'm going to set all the drives to uh, JBOD drives. So like if I do show all right now, yeah, I don't have anything other than the drives connected. So let's go ahead and we're going to do... Um, 252 uh, all drives set jbod all right and i should be able to do jbod all show all right so i have all the drives configured as jbod and they should be available uh, under ls SCSI as dev sda sdb sdc sdd and now let's glue it together with uh software raid so mdadm uh create dev md0 uh, level 0 right raid devices 4 uh, assume clean dev nvme or no 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 this is sda through d so all right cat proc md stat all right so now i have md0 uh, raid 0 with those four uh, jbod drives so let's go ahead and modify the uh, benchmark script to test against md0 and uh, we'll run it so for the next scenario we're going to take these uh, four nvme drives we're going to glue them together as a raid 0 with a software uh, raid so let me do dev md0 we're going to create dev md0 and this is going to be raid uh, zero we're going to have four devices and do run assume clean so there's no background initialization and uh, i got drives zero through three and one all right uh wait a second oh raid dash devices. All right, here we go. All right, so now we have this RAID 0 volume as uh, dev md0. So let's edit the, uh, the script here, and we're going to run the test against the md0. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so here are the results for the four drive in RAID 0. All right, so let's start with the uh, 4K random IO results. And again, we're going to focus on the IOPS number here. Here is the one worker 4K random reads. Now remember, we got about 660,000 IOPS for one drive. And so the target that we're going to look for in terms of IOPS performance here is four times that, which is about 
uh, what, 2640,000. Uh, so let's just say 2.6 million uh, IOPS is what we're kind of targeting here if things scale linearly. Here we are seeing 12,000 IOPS, so obviously really struggling at Q depth one. Uh, here we're getting a little bit better at around 100, 178, 180,000 IOPS. So nothing close to the full potential of those four SSDs in a RAID 0, really. Uh, at QDEP 256, we are up at 256,000 IOPS. We're seeing the, the hardware RAID outperform the JBOD and software RAID and the direct NVMe uh, with software RAID. So that's kind of interesting in that particular use case. But if we go up to eight workers and 16 workers here, that advantage that does the uh, hardware RAID setup has uh, disappears basically. So here QDEP1 again struggling, but at QDEP16, we are over a million. So we're at 1.1 million IOPS here. So this is getting more interesting, right? The hardware RAID versus JBOD with software RAID is more or less evenly matched there with the NVMe kind of slightly slightly edging above that. Uh, at QDEP256, we're starting to see the NVMe uh, outshine the other ones here. And even the uh, the software, so this is interesting, the software RAID with the four JBOD drives, it's outperforming the hardware RAID with those four N uh, NVMe drives. And the software RAID with the four NVMe drives directly connected is actually significantly outperforming them at 1.7 million IOPS versus 1.4 million to 1.3 million. So that's that's really interesting. Although nothing close so far to the 2.6 million that we're hoping to see, but let's go ahead and look at the higher end workload here at 4K random reads with 16 workers. Uh, again, queued up the one struggling, but here we are at 1.7, 1.5, almost 1.6, 1.7, almost 1.8, 1, above 1.8 million IOPS. And here we are uh, seeing 1.5. Now that's interesting. The hardware RAID seems like it's hitting some sort of limit. Notice how it's just plateaued here at uh, 1.58 million IOPS, 1.58 million IOPS. So I don't really know why that is because the... Th Remember, this controller is rated for 3 million IOPS, and that's actually 3 million IOPS 4K random read IOPS in RAID configuration. Here we have RAID 0, and we seem to be seeing some sort of cap at 1.58 million IOPS. I don't know why that is. All right, but here we go. Here we go. Here's the interesting stuff. At 200, uh, 256 Q depth, 16 workers, we are finally getting close to the 2.6. This is 2.59 million IOPS with the JBOD and software RAID. And here we are, 2.63 or almost 2.64 million IOPS for the four NVMe drives directly connected to the PCIe bus in software RAID 0. Here we hit basically that uh, linear scale limit of uh, 2,640,000. So that's really, really close actually here. So that's that's really cool to see that we can scale linearly uh, with those four SSDs in software RAID 0. And, and somehow that is significantly above, that's 2.6 million IOPS compared to 1.58 million IOPS with the hardware RAID configuration. So I can't explain why that is. And of course, my hypothesis was always that the NVMe would outperform the other ones. And it certainly uh, seems to be the case in this particular test. Although, you know, we saw in the previous test that that's not always the case. There are some surprises here. So not sure what's going on with the hardware RAID here that seems to be limited at 1.58 million IOPS. But all right, let's look at the uh, 4K random writes one worker. We're seeing uh, you know, struggling at QDEPTH 1, but at the higher QDEPTHs, the uh, hardware RAID is outshining the other one. So we, we're looking at, what, 250,000 IOPS versus 236 versus 224. The hardware RAID seems to show an advantage under one work, uh, the one worker workload. But we go up to eight workers, and I think that advantage kind of goes away. Uh, QDEPTH 1, the uh, direct PCIe uh, NVMe drives seem to have an advantage. Uh, pretty significant. We're almost at, almost at 490 over a little over 409,000 IOPS here compared to under 400,000 IOPS and that's just a little bit above 400. So there is a uh, significant advantage here at uh, QDEPTH 1. If you look at QDEPTH 16, we're really evenly matched across the board at what 850,000 IOPS ish. At uh, QDEPTH uh, 256, again very similarly matched with the hardware RAID kind of edging above the other ones just a little bit. 
And if we go to a 4K random writes with 16 workers, yeah, we're seeing all three different configurations evenly matched more or less at 800,000 IOPS. Now keep in mind that we were seeing about 200,000 IOPS for each SSD. So if we were to scale that times four, we should expect somewhere around 800,000 IOPS. And basically this is uh, exactly what we are seeing a little bit above 800,000 IOPS. Although up here, I think we saw something higher, right? Yeah, here we are seeing 850,000 IOPS. This configuration is outperforming, you know, well, it's a different workload obviously, but this this workload seems to be able to achieve 850,000 IOPS. So that's, that's more than quadruple the 200,000 IOPS that we were seeing earlier. Other than that, the performance between the hardware RAID 0 versus the JBOT software RAID versus the NVMe software RAID are more or less evenly matched across the board here with the uh, 4K random writes. All right, so let's go ahead now, let's look at the sequential results. All right, so here are the sequential results. And again, we're gonna look and just focus on the uh, bandwidth numbers for the sequential results. So this is interesting here. So this is under a single worker load. So the number we're looking for here, remember we got about 3,300 megabytes per second for a single drive. So if we quadruple that number, uh, that's 13, 1200 megabytes per second so that's kind of the the ideal target if we are able to scale linearly and here we are 8500 9300 9, so you know we're not really achieving the quadruple scale here but here we are much much closer all right 12300 13100 now that's really close the quadruple number for one ssd goes from 3300 to times four is 13200 so we're able to see the quadruple performance of a single ssd under software raid zero in the jbot configuration just under one worker load so that's that's really cool the nvme here is struggling yeah, if you look down here, you know, it's, yeah, it's struggling. So these are all the re uh, sequential read tests. You can see that yellow bar is below the red. I mean, the re the red bar, which is the JBOD software RAID zero configuration is outperforming all the other ones in, in a lot of these higher end use cases. And, and here it's evenly matched, but with the, the, with the hardware RAID zero, but it's outperforming the software RAID zero with the direct PCIe connections. All right, so let's look at sequential write performance numbers here. Q depth one, we're seeing the NVMe kind of have a slight advantage, uh, 2,600 uh, megabytes a second over 2,000. So that, yeah, that's pretty significant at Q depth one. But that advantage basically kind of goes away when we go to Q depth 16, Q depth 256. I mean, the, these are more or less evenly matched, maybe with the NVMe kind of edging just a little bit above the other ones, but really not significant. So let's go to eight worker load here. So this is really interesting where at Q-depth one, the NVMe configuration is falling behind the hardware RAID and the JBOD software RAID. But then we go to Q-depth 16 and the situation kind of flips. The NVMe is way above, I mean, significantly above. We're looking at uh, 12,700 compared to 9,700. For the single SSD, we got a sequential write performance of 32 100 megabytes per second. So if you quadruple that, we should be expecting somewhere around 12,800. And this is the number here, right? 12,770. That's, you know, more or less 12,800 right there. So we're able to, in this particular case, basically scale those four SSDs uh, linearly. But in the other use cases, we're not. You know, let's let's see what happens at uh, 16 worker load here. Okay, so here's uh, 12,300. So a little bit on the lower side, 12,771. So this again here, we're getting close to the quadruple of one SSD, but the other workloads are behind. And, you know, this is reminding me of what we saw earlier with the single drive, that basically the NVMe seems to shine in these kind of medium uh, level workloads, like with eight workers, QDEP 16 here, the NVMe is uh, outstanding and under 16 uh, workers, QDepth 1 and QDepth 16, it's outstanding. But at the higher end, at 256 QDepth, uh, it kind of evens out compared to the other uh, configurations. And similarly here, QDepth 256, eight workers, it more or less evens out. So anyway, those are the results for the four drives in a RAID 0. So now we're going to configure those drives as individual drives and then run a test on all four drives and aggregate all those results. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, guys, so I have the server booted up uh, with the RAID controller in uh, RAID personality. So let me just kind of show you that. All right, and we're gonna do what we did at the very beginning, which is set up all the drives as single drive RAID zero. 
and then we're going to run the benchmark individually on all the drives and then aggregate the, those results. All right, so let's, well here, let me just kind of confirm. Yep, we see the four drives showing up as SDA, B, C, and D. Okay, somehow in reverse order. I don't know why, but okay, let's go in here and we are going to test each of those drives individually. So that's that setting and uh, let's go ahead. All right, so the server's booted back up in uh, JBOD mode and let's just confirm that. Show personality, oops. Okay, so we have in JBOD mode and if I show all, see I have the four drives. Uh, let's go ahead and configure those drives as JBOD. So E252 uh, S all set JBOD. All right, so now I should be able to, yep, I can see four drives set up as JBOD. They should be showing up here as LSCSI. All right, so they're showing up as SDA through SDD, which is the same as bef the previous test. So um, I should be able to, yep, I, mean, I can just reuse those that setting and uh, we'll run the test. All right, so in the next test, we're going to test all four drives individually and just aggregate all the results. And so I have the four drives as just separate NVMe drives and we need to test against all four. So it would be this one. So we're gonna test again against NVMe zero and one, uh, NVMe one and one, NVMe two and one, NVMe three and one, and then just have the results aggregated together. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, run this benchmark. All right guys, so here are the final benchmark results with the four drives being tested simultaneously, but asynchronously, and then aggregating the results. This is basically doing the same test as we did in the previous previous one, except we're just removing the RAID logic out of that you know intermediate layer, just to see if that RAID logic kind of interferes with any of these results. As far as performance goes, this is probably where we're gonna see the highest performance. So we're gonna start with the uh, 4K random IO results. And uh, again, we're gonna focus on the IOPS numbers for these 4K random IO test results. So here we are at uh, one worker. The number we're looking for here is 660,000 IOPS times four, which comes out to about 2,640,000 IOPS. So about 2.64 million IOPS. Under a single worker workload, random read, we're not really able to achieve that. We're here, we're hitting maybe a million IOPS here. The direct NVMe, uh, connection here seems to have a slight advantage. We were seeing 1.09 million IOPS versus uh, under a million IOPS here. So yeah, definitely the NVMe setup here has a slight advantage. Let's go down to eight workers. And here the, the results between the three different configurations are kind of more or less even with the direct NVMe kind of having a slight edge and the JBOD having a slight edge uh, against the, uh, the RAID zero drives. Uh, being tested in aggregate. And here, oh, okay, here's here's some interesting numbers. So at QDEP 256, eight workers, the single drive rate zeros in aggregate achieve about 2.49, let's say 2.49 million, 2.5 million IOPS. But the JBOD drives and the NVMe drives are hitting 2.64 million IOPS. So that's exactly the number we're looking for, which is the 660,000 times four, right? So we are able to achieve the full IOPS capability of all four drives in this test here with the eight workers and QDEP 256. And then uh, you can see that the NVMe does have a slight edge above the others, but not as much as under the one worker workload. Let's go to uh, 16 workers here. Okay, so even under 16 workers, you can see that the NVMe configuration has a slight edge. Well, here on the QDEP 256, it's, it's more significant. It's 2.64 million versus 2.38 million IOPS here. Uh, in the QDEP 16, it's kind of evenly matched with the JBOD and, and slightly ahead of the RAID 0 configuration. All right, let's uh, go look at the 4K random writes. Now for the 4K random writes, uh, I'll just remind you that the target number we're looking for is 200,000 IOPS times four. So we're looking at somewhere around 800,000 IOPS. And under the uh, single worker workload here, QDEPTH1 struggling, 
But here we are at QW16, and we are hitting very, very close to 800, above 800 right here with the NVMe. So NVMe does seem to have a slight edge above the other ones, but it is very closely evenly matched, honestly. Let's look at uh, eight workers. Yeah, there's almost no difference here. We are basically seeing the full performance of all four drives in all three configurations, kind of more or less evenly matched. So yes, NVMe does have a slight edge, but it's really not significant. If you look at the 16 worker, yeah, this is just very, very evenly matched across the board, all above 800,000 IOPS. All right, let's uh, move on to the 256k sequential uh, IO results. In this case, again, we're going to focus on the bandwidth numbers. And so the bandwidth numbers we're looking for here in the sequential read case is 13,200. Okay, that's the performance of one drive times four. And, you know, the first thing I'm noticing here, just as we saw earlier with the uh, RAID 0 configuration, the NVMe is slower. The NVMe is slower for sure here across the board it is slower and you know what i'm noticing like the raid zero the four raid zero drives versus the jbod drives are kind of evenly matched but if you look down at the higher end workloads the eight workers and 16 workers you guys can already see from the charts what's peaking right so it's the red bar so the jbod configuration is outperforming both the raid and the direct nvme uh, configurations we're looking for 13,000. So we already achieved that 13,200 here, you know, 13,171, that's close enough, right? And same thing over here, 13,000. And really the only configuration that is able to achieve that consistently is the JBOD. I mean here, yeah, the, the RAID 0 is able to achieve that too, but it falls behind here at the higher Q depth. And here again, you can see the JBOD configuration. And then at the highest workload, the 16 worker workload, you can see that the, the RAID configuration and the direct NVMe connections are falling behind the JBOD configuration for some reason. All right, so let's move on to the sequential writes. So sequential writes at one worker, I and mean, this is very, very evenly matched here at QDF1. Maybe the NVMe has a slight edge at 7. Point, almost 8,000 megabytes per second compared to 7,700 megabytes per second. But otherwise, it's very evenly matched. At the higher workloads here, sequential writes, the NVMe is reaching uh, full potential here at Q depth 1 at 12,751. So that's very close to the uh, 12,800 that we're targeting. Uh, but for whatever reason, the RAID 0 and JBOD are kind of lagging behind here. And the same thing kind of more or less manifests itself here. But then as we increase the Q depth to 256, the three different configurations basically even out at the lowest workloads and the higher workloads, we're seeing that the performance between the RAID 0 JBOD versus NVMe direct connection are basically even, but in the middle with uh, eight workers QDEPTH1, QDEPTH16, and 16 workers at QDEPTH1, we're seeing that the NVMe is significantly outperforming the other ones. The NVMe seems to have some advantage in this kind of middle tier workload, but it more or less matches the other ones at the highest end workloads and the low end workloads. Anyway, those are the results for the asynchronous performance profile for those four drives. All right, guys, so here are the conclusions I think we can draw from all those tests that we just ran and just went over. So I just want to kind of summarize some of the findings here. But basically, I think the biggest surprise for me is that the direct PCIe NVMe is not always better. So definitely we saw that it was slower in all the 256K sequential read, which I really cannot explain. I don't understand why that is, but those are the results we saw, right? So the maximum speeds that we were able to achieve for the 256K sequential writes were only achievable through using the direct PCIe NVMe configuration, right? So that's also kind of interesting. So, you know, it's like, it's a trade-off. Like you have the direct PCIe connection not always performing the best, especially with the sequential reads, but with the sequential writes, you could really only achieve the full potential of those SSDs using the direct PCIe connection. The JBOD mode really surprised me as well. The sequential reads where the direct PCIe was not performing very well, the JBOD configurations were performing the best. And that was really interesting, you know, considering that that's JBOD with software RAID versus hardware RAID versus direct connection to the NVMe drives with software RAID. Somehow going through the controller in JBOD mode with software RAID outperformed all the other ones in the sequential read test. Now, when it comes to the other tests, like the random uh, reads, the direct PCIe overall, I think was better for the 4K random reads. Now for the 4K random writes, honestly, all the methods were 
kind of evenly matched. It almost like didn't really matter that much, except for, you know, some of the edge cases where like you at Q depth one, you know, the direct PCIe had a slight edge, but for the most part, you know, if you look at those charts again, they, all those bars were kind of evenly matched across the board for 4k random writes. Okay. So for the maximum IOPS, we were able to achieve 2.6 or actually 2.64 million IOPS. And that really is kind of the limits of those four NVMe drives working all together, right? And that is certainly, you know, it doesn't get anything close to the 3 million IOPS rating of the the controller, the Broadcom uh, 9560, which has the SAS 3916 chipset. That's rated for 3 million IOPS. Obviously, we can't get there with these SSDs, but 2.64 million is actually pretty good. And that's going through direct PCIe, which doesn't include the controller, but even with JBOD mode, you know, which goes through the controller, we are seeing 2.6 million IOPS. You know, that I think was pretty interesting. In order to really kind of push the limits of the 3 million IOPS, we're going to have to get some faster SSDs. For maximum throughput, we were able to achieve 12.9 gigabytes per second. You know, that's again, reaches the limits of those four NVMe drives. And it is well within the uh, the 15.6 gigabytes per second of the PCIe 4.0 by 8 bandwidth. And that was achieved through JBOD mode. So again, that's going through the controller. If we wanted to get closer to the limit of 15.6 gigabytes per second, again, I think we're going to have to use some faster SSDs. And then the last thing that I think was perplexing with the SAS 3916 chipset is rated at 3 million IOPS, and that includes 4K random reads in RAID mode. If you look up the, the chipset specifications, that's what it can do. But for whatever reason, RAID 0 with those four drives, 4K random reads seem to hit a limit at around 1.5, 1.6 million IOPS. So I kind of ranked the results here under the four different types of tests and the three different types of modes. We got the RAID mode, JBOD mode, and direct PCIe. 4K random reads, again, I think we saw the best performance out of the direct PCIe connection. Uh, JBOD mode did fairly well. RAID kind of suffered a little bit. Uh, 4K uh, random writes, again, those were kind of so evenly matched across the board. I just gave everything two stars. And for sequential reads, that JBOD mode, man, that JBOD mode really stood out. And so I gave that the three stars. And for whatever reason, direct PCIe was just not doing very well. So I gave that the one star. The RAID mode, you know, was kind of in between there a little bit. And for the sequential uh, writes, the direct PCIe performed the best and JBOD mode kind of second to that. And so, you know, RAID mode was kind of the, the third. So I gave that one star. And so when I rank these accordingly, as you see in the chart here, I think on balance, using the the NVMe drives directly connected to the PCIe is still, I think, the overall better choice in general. There, you know, there are some losses and disadvantages with that sequential read case, but overall, it has gains in the random reads and the sequential writes, and then of course the random writes were kind of just evenly matched. So overall, if you just kind of on on balance of everything, the PC the direct PCIe connection is still, I think, the best overall. But if you have the special case, the special use case of where you are a mostly like 90% or, or higher sequential read workload, for whatever reason, that JBOD mode had the highest performance. All right, so what is the use case for this Broadcom 9560-69 controller? I think that's something we should talk about a little bit. Now, obviously, the most obvious use case for that Broadcom controller is if you want to use your NVMe drives you know, normally, which would be connected directly to the PCI bus, but you want traditional RAID. You want to set up all those drives in some sort of RAID volume, like a RAID 1 or RAID 5, RAID 6, that kind of stuff. You know, obviously, you're not going to get that anywhere else, okay, As at least not with hardware RAID. Yeah, you could do a software RAID, sure, but if you wanted a hardware RAID setup, this is really the only option. You need a RAID controller, okay? You need a, uh, a tri-mode RAID controller if you want traditional RAID, hardware RAID with those NVMe drives. So that's the most obvious use case. And then second to that, of course, is that JBOD mode. I, I you know That one really uh, perplexes me, but I'm impressed that the JBOD mode with software RAID 0 seems to have some advantage when it comes to sequential read workloads. But otherwise, honestly, if you're using your NVMe drives directly connected to the PCI bus, I think that's the best use of those NVMe drives, especially if you are using things like ZFS, software RAID, or, you know, Unraid, or any, any of those other things, okay? 
All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Hope you liked this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, you like this sort of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my videos. Also, if you want to support my channel, go check out my eBay store. I got the best selection of pre-flash IT mode HPA SAS controllers for your ZFS, TrueNAS, or Unraid builds. So go check out the link down in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.